Acoustic Chop Channel. I am John Chapman, and this is Jeremy Chapman. I grew. Here, you grew. No, he's holding a little bitty mandolin. Anyway, we're here to talk about this Gibson L1 from 1920. This is old, Jeremy. So we're going to talk about this just after this break. <laughs> Jeremy did not become an amazing growing man. He actually had a mandolin that a was shrinking. Mandolin. shrinking. <laughs> but we're not talking about this. We're we're not. We do have a companion video where we do talk about this instrument. But this video is all about this beautiful Gibson here. Before we get into that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and share this, commenting. There's all these algorithms that if you interact in any kind of way, Al this video, Gore rhythms? Al Gore invented it. And <laughs> this video gets pushed out to more people if you guys interact in some way or another. And if you didn't like the video, that's even better because then uh, people that don't like things actually promote it more than things that they do like. So there you go. We'll go anyway, with that. Also, this is the worst guitar ever. It's <laughs> a stupid brand and Wow, that's really hard. I just got some people mad. Oh, you did. All right, so also, there will be a companion video. Also, with the song that you just heard, completely separate, links down in the comments, as well as, if you want to skip past all this stuff, you can go all the way to the end and hear the tone sample of this instrument. So we'll talk about that, too. But, before, but more fun for us is to actually talk about the instrument. It is. But before we do that, I want to get back to the Al Gore rhythms. Al Gore rhythms. I'm just trying to imagine. He was imagine. quite the dancer. I'm trying to imagine. Remember the inauguration the of the, Al Gore the saxophone? Rhythms. With uh, Clinton, and then I think I was over in the corner doing <laughs> something like that. It's climate climate rhythms. Anyway, uh, we're gonna talk. I'm not stiff. Remember that kiss? Him and his wife. <laughs> Passionate. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we're, we're talking about this. Um, we're gonna talk about this Gibson L1. This is actually a really cool guitar. I had a blast playing this guitar. Surprisingly very playable guitar. Uh, we Why is this that surprising? 19, well, One, because it has a giant neck. <laughs> it's 1920, first of all, and second, yes, check out this neck. I mean, look at that profile right there. I hope you guys can see it. It's about the upper that. part of a baseball bat. The, uh, and right the here, off the I, think, front. Uh, I don't, I, I think the barrel of the bat right about here. So you could this play is, baseball with this guitar <laughs> as well, which is something they did a bunch in the though, 20s. Um, this is actually kind of cool. It's amazing to me that with this big of a neck, this V shape actually makes it quite playable and quite comfortable. Um, it's com most, most guitar enthusiasts probably know this, but the reason that they made these big, super chunky necks at the time, they didn't have the truss rods that we're used to now in necks where you can stability. adjust those and give them more stability so the neck doesn't basically collapse on itself. Mm -hmm. So they built them to withstand the test. And this of has time. some really cool wear and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you, those of you who are, who are from 1920, you know what this guitar has been through. You probably you saw know. it new. You were there. You were part of this. Anyway, um, this is kind of quint quintessential of that lore period of what Gibson was doing. Really cool features on this. I got a kick out of this tailpiece. This was an original one. has this tortoiseshell deal. Now, we had to come up with bridge pins that would fit in here. Um, and there's been, you find a lot of these guitars that have been modified and changed and all kinds of stuff. But overall, most of this is all put together. We did have to come up with new bridge pins to fit um, that were bigger be shorter diameter. and thicker around. Yeah, yeah. shorter so it can fit within that space underneath that trap, trap, trapeze uh, tailpiece. This has still the original uh, bridge, which is really, really cool, intonated and kind of has a cool deal as well as the pick guard that has a little post for stability inside the bridge. Um, so that's kind of something they did to things. the mandolins at that time. Mm -hmm. They had the same similar pick guard with the, the post going through the bridge foot. This is, I mean, speaking of that, this is part of that deal. During this time period, the mandolins was actually probably what Gibson was known for more so than even the guitars. Um, mandolins were kind of their main thing, and this has got a lot of the same build uh, ideas that they were doing in mandolins. The arch top oval hole uh, kind of thing and sound. This does have the original uh, cool tuners. 
that uh, honestly haven't even had the buttons just to, to, yeah. you know fall apart on this, which is kind of rare. Um, has the uh, tailpiece or the, the uh, yes the pick guard that is actually a cool mechanism that you can loosen up and take engineering off and, man. This this was around the time that Lloyd Lohr became kind of the. Uh, production manager at Gibson, so he would have been possibly overseeing this guitar, but I know that's right when he come on, was 1920s, and those famous Lloyd Lohr mandolins that he's so known for, but he was also overseeing a lot of the guitar mm -hmm. builds and kind of running the whole I, don't, the whole I honestly show down don't have the entire, uh, you'll, you'll not believe this, but this is something that I don't already know everything about. Wow, I've never heard you say that before. <laughs> And if we're wrong on any of this, please put it in the comments below oh, because I, know I check will. those periodically just to see what I said wrong. <laughs> I, know I don't correct will. myself, but I just like, oh, well. There you go. He might have a point, but. Hmm, maybe not. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> anyway, again, extremely playable guitar. I've actually thoroughly enjoyed getting to pick this guitar because it is extremely playable. Any chord shape. It's the tone. Do. It's got that cool tone. That you That's can. right. We had to pick out a 1920 song, and we spent about 30 minutes trying to figure out a song figure that we could out. fake our way through. That's right. Just to kind of uh, pay homage to that era Absolutely. and that tone. So, again, this is the kind of guitar, if you're looking for something that is unique and special and fun, um, and honestly, there's just nothing that sounds like this. This is Gibson, quintessential of that turn-of-the-century sound uh, for guitars. Um, you know what? Honestly, I don't want to see this go. It should... Jeremy, this should end up in How many collection. videos? We're going to go through those videos and see how many of those you asked me if you can keep it. No, you cannot. This has to go into somebody's collection. No, that, it should that go can into actually, mine, uh, Jeremy. Well, I'll sell it to you. Um, that's fine. <laughs> we'll even give you a payment plan. Really? Yeah, for like two weeks. Wow. You can pay it off in two weeks. All right, so there you go. It is the Gibson L, uh, L1 guitar, uh, mahogany neck, maple laminate size and back, carved spruce top, really unique sound. Um, and just definitely something, I think if you ever find one of these, you should play it, even if you never intend to, uh, to own it, you should find one of these just to play it so that what you can What was the serial number on that too? It, had, it was missing a digit. So well, like... uh, let, let's talk about that real fast. This paper tag, we actually had to put a uh, black light in there to kind of get it because it was written in pencil, so it's really hard to see. But it is missing a digit. You'll see that on the website. It's 8709 question mark. Eight. Eight six seven five three zero nine. Five three nine question mark eight. <laughs> I believe. Anyway, that's us trying to find the uh, the right stuff for that. But I digress. We won't talk anymore about that. Cool guitar. Definitely something everybody should try at some point. In and their... somebody should have in their collection because it, it besides being fun to play and a really cool tone. I love instruments like this, just kind of imagining what the history might have been, who played this. this could they be. might have been in some kind of cool swing band, or it could have been in somebody's closet for the last 30 years. We don't know. We'll just make up stories. It's like the red violin. There could be a dead wife's blood on there. I don't know. That is weird. I actually just said spoiler alert, you by the way. You spoiled that whole movie right there. You ruined it. Anyway. There's a, there's a special ingredient in the stain. That's all I got to say. <laughs> this is the 1920 L1, and now we're going to give you a little tone sample of it. appreciate you guys watching that video. It was my favorite one we've made so far. We, we've done hundreds of videos and that was the best one. It was. And the next one's gonna be even better. If you'd like to see that, <laughs> be sure you subscribe to this channel. And also, the more you comment and inter interact below, the more the YouTube algorithms pick it up and start pushing it out to other people, like-minded people. Algorithms? Algorithms, they're everywhere. They permeate the internet and YouTube's got one. And it watches our videos and it sees how much you comment and then it pushes us to other people like you. And we want everyone to experience the, the acoustic shop world where we talk about instruments, we do reviews, we got some fun videos coming up. We thank you guys so much for being a part of it and we'll see you in the next video.